All right, so for the top hat stuff for today, let me pull this up. Um, okay, so here I've got my questions. Let's just kind of jump into the stuff that we covered earlier in the week, like output contracts. And, and uh, if any of you want to, feel free to, to do this right now. I'll give you, I'll give you 30 seconds. Um, and then we'll go over this one. All right, so I'll just pull this up, see where we are right now. And as the title insinuates, Output contracts, after all, we're going to say that this is a valid output contract. Now, under general contract law, this wouldn't be valid. Why? Because you need specific numbers for the, the amount, uh, the, the quantity. Uh, but the UCC, again, it falls under the UCC because tomatoes are goods. And the UCC says, even if there isn't a quantity term, we have all these exceptions. Like if you're going to supply everything that I need or all that you produce, the, these, these various exceptions, then those are gonna be valid contracts, which is why A is gonna be the correct answer here. Um, now, we could, we could add some complexity to this. Um, Hillary planted two acres of organic tomatoes. Bernie agrees to buy all of the tomatoes. Now, let's, let's mix it up. Let's say on the exam, I say something like, you know, wink, wink, um, maybe, Hillary has a bumper crop year. Instead, normally she, she, she can uh, uh, produce 50 bushels, whatever a bushel is, 50 bushels of tomatoes off of her two acre farm. But this year, instead of 50, she produced 5,000 acres, or sorry, bushels of tomatoes. Does Bernie have to buy all of those tomatoes? Well, if he's buying them by the bushel, you can see this is quickly going to bankrupt Bernie in, in this hypothetical situation. And, and so if I pulled you, I think you'd, you'd all be able to say, no, like Bernie's probably not going to have to buy all of those tomatoes. Why? Because this was just an abnormal year. Normally, every year before this, she's produced <clears throat> 50 bushels, and now it jumped up to thousands of bushels. Like, that, that's just crazy, unreasonable, hence Bernie isn't going to have to buy all of those. Um, again, if in, in, in that scenario, he's, he's buying all of the tomatoes, but he has a per bushel dollar amount that he has to buy. It could be that Bernie um, just said, I'll pay you $10,000 for all the tomatoes that you grow on your two acre farm. And again, every year, Hillary's produced 50 bushels, but this year she produces thousands, does Bernie get all of those tomatoes for the amount, the flat rate that he paid Hillary? And again, maybe not. Like, like look for weird things. Uh, look for abnormal years on this. And then you can say, like, we'll, we'll allow the parties to renegotiate in those situations. All right. So yeah, let's go to the next, unless there's questions on this one. Okay, uh, next one then. All right, Brother Hales. All right, it's time for me to get a farm because I really do actually want a farm. Um, so I purchased five acres of land, a tractor, a hand trowel, like one of those little, that's gonna be useful on a five acre farm. Uh, and I hire a farming consultant. Which of these purchases fall under the UCC? Sometimes we call this the UCC2, but just the Uniform Commercial Code. All right, we got 30 more seconds. All right, get it in. You got eight seconds. All right, so six of you got it in. 
that's cool. Um, all right, so let's go through these. Does everything fall under the UCC? No, you didn't pick that because we've got some services and things mixed up. All right, so the tractor and the, the hand trowel. Yes, that those are both correct because the tractor, you can touch it and move it. Obviously, it has wheels on it. Uh, the hand trowel, definitely. Um, so yes, uh, okay, okay, perfect. Um, so that's gonna be the right answer. But C, C is there to trick you. C is there to mess you up. And I'm going to do this exact same thing on the exam. So don't let me trick you. Um, the hand trowel is not because it's not worth more than 500 bucks. Mm, I got gotcha. you. And I got you with that, that weird thing. Like the UCC applies to what? The sale of goods. But remember, the statute of frauds only applies to the sale of goods worth $500 or more. But that's something totally different. That's just when we need a writing or evidence or admission, et cetera. That's the Janush stuff. Um, but remember, the UCC just always applies to goods, not the goods that are worth a certain amount of money. All right, so, that, so C is me just trying to, two separate things that are related and me trying to mix you up, all right? Uh, the land and the tractor, no, land is not a good. So that's why nobody picked B. All right, good, questions about? Oh. On, on this one, uh, just like in the previous case, everything was kind of wrapped together, including the, the services and, and goodwill that weren't goods. So if this were to somehow go to court and, you know, wouldn't they all be bundled together in, in the lawsuit? Well, you're assuming that the purchase agreement, like one purchase agreement was for all of these things. And I would say that's, that's not ever going to be the case. Like, my purchase of land is going to be one agreement. My purchase of the tractor, maybe the tractor and the hand trowel would go together. But a farming consultant, that's going to be a separate agreement. So what I'm saying is I'm just buying all of these individual things. But gotcha. on your appeal, gosh, that's, that's a brilliant way to appeal this um, by saying, look, I looked at the predominant factor. The land's worth nothing. Tractors, by the way, are worth like millions of dollars. I had no idea, but like your typical combine is a lot of money. Um, and, and so, yeah, you, you could definitely make that argument. I think that's a good forward thinking appeal. All right, uh, let's do another one here. Okay, all right, so now this one's kind of tough. All right, so the MFO, that stands for the Merchant Firm Offer. So which one of the following is an example of the merchant firm offer rule? Let me tell you before you get going, the merchant firm offer, if it's a merchant and the merchant says, I'm going to hold this offer open for a certain amount of time, then that's valid. Now, under general contract law, that would have never been allowed because there's no consideration. This is just me out of my goodwill saying, I'm going to, I'm going to keep this offer open for a certain amount of time. Um, and this one is tough. But pay attention because the similar question is on the exam. So, all right, go ahead. Um, and I'll, I'll read. No, I, I'll let you read these. Um, David owns some apple. Well, I'm going to read it because some of you aren't on. Yeah, you can't see it. So David owns some apple trees and wants to sell all of his apples. Joe, a neighbor, owns a grocery store and signs an offer that states, I'll pay you $5,000 for the apples. This offer will be good for 10 days. Okay. B. David owns peach trees and wants to sell his peaches. Jill, David's neighbor, who is a massage therapist, signs an offer that says, I'll pay you 400 bucks for 30 pounds of peaches. This offer will be good for, four, for seven days. All right, C. Carl offers Philip a farmer 20 grand for his land. Let's just scratch that. That says land. UCC doesn't apply at all. All right, D. Uh, Jacob offers Joseph three grand to install an alarm system. After writing the contract, Joseph agrees with the terms and signs it. And then Joseph installs the alarm system and gets paid by Jacob. All right, take a couple of minutes, seconds there and pick which one is the merchant firm offer rule. This one, this one's tough. It's just too close though. Oh, sorry. I have to hit that. There you go. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, just a couple more seconds. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, so everybody picked A. That's great. All right, um, now the six of you um, got this. Usually when I, when I pull a whole class and there's 30 people, uh, it's, it's not like this. So um, for those that are watching, I'll kind of, let's walk through this and explain a couple of things. All right, David owns some apple trees in his backyard. Is he a merchant? No, he's just got some apple trees in his backyard. But the key thing to remember with the merchant firm offer rule is that the merchant can be either the buyer or the seller. Um, in this case, the merchant is the buyer. Remember, Joe is the neighbor but owns a grocery store. Is he a merchant of apples? You bet. They sell apples in groceries in every grocery store that I've ever been to in the entire world. It, like there are always apples there. So, um, yeah, I'll pay you five grand for the apples. The offer is good for 10 days. Wrote it. It's got the letter. That's good enough. That meets the, all the requirements for the merchant firm offer rule. Now, I tried to make, trip you up with B, where David owns peaches, same thing, but he's selling it to a massage therapist. And that's the problem. Like, does, is Jill a merchant of peaches? Probably not. She's probably a merchant of lotions and candles and whatever else you sell at a massage store, um, but goods that you sell at a, at a massage store whatever you call that. Um, but she's probably not a merchant of peaches, hence this doesn't apply, B doesn't really work. C, we scratched off the list really quick because that deals with land. D, uh, lots of people fall for D, not you guys obviously, but um, D is just your contract. There's no merchant firm offer here at all. There, there's no offer to keep anything open. It's just an offer, it's like an offer and acceptance and consideration, that's it. There's that the, there's no firm offer, even though you could call an alarm system goods and et cetera. But again, scratch D because it's just a completed contract, no firm offer. So awesome, good job. Questions on this one? On this one for for B, if those peaches were to be used as a, an ingredient for one of her massage oils or whatever, mm -hmm. would the merchant firm offer then apply? Yeah, it absolutely could. And in your appeal, you're going to tell me all the reasons that she really is a, a merchant of peaches and get creative because, yeah, she, she rubs squished peaches over peaches. Gross. All right. I've never been to a massage therapist and, and the thought frightens me. Like, I don't want anybody touching me. All right. So let's move on before I vomit. Okay. Oh, good one. All right. This is the Coke one that I promised last period. So, um, all right. You've got a minute. Go for it. It's open. Ten more seconds. All right. So let's see what we got. Oh, one last minute entry. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, you, you. I can tell you are the. You, you're a good group here right now. So, um, I'll come back to A. But, but remember, in this scenario, BYU-Idaho, let's say BYU-Idaho starts following the, 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 the wicked lead of BYU and we start selling Coke on campus at, at BYU-Idaho, right? Um, anyway, okay, whatever. So, uh, so we do it and when we order it, we get 500 cases of what we ordered, or, or sorry, Half of, half, of, half of our order is what we ordered. The other half is some garbage named 
Coke Zero or Coke Zero Sugar, whatever it is. All right. Um, and, and they can't fix it. They can't get us 250 cases of regular Coke like we ordered. So um, let, let's jump down to B. So let's talk about why the wrong answers aren't correct, because I think sometimes that helps people learn. Is required to accept all of the soda, but doesn't have to pay for the Coke Zero. All right, this is like, um, what, what are we calling these people now? Uh, Karens or something? This is Karen's response. Like, you sent me the wrong thing. Sorry, I just got sassy too. You sent me the wrong thing and I'm keeping it for free. All right, like your mistake, I'm keeping it. All right, this is not the right answer. Like, this is not the legal answer. You don't get free stuff just because somebody else made a mistake. So um, you don't get to keep it. Now, you may get damages, yes, but it doesn't mean you get damages plus you get to keep the wrong. Anyway, that's the wrong answer. All right. So let's, let's move on before I say anything else about that. Um, C, must, entirely, must reject the entire shipment. Just throw that one out right now. What do you mean you have to reject the entire shipment? Half of it is what you wanted. So, so we're not going to make you reject everything. You get to keep. Like, this makes sense. You get to keep the right stuff. All right. And then D, we'll have to look to state common law for a remedy because UCC doesn't cover sales of that wicked brew. This is like the stupid answer and I just make fun. By the way, I grew up in a family and in a home where Coke was basically as bad as cocaine. And, and so, yeah, I'll tell a funny story about that someday. Um, but yeah, like, like we were not allowed to drink Coke. And I was actually in the Friend magazine when I was a kid because I wouldn't drink Coke at the end of my little kid. Like when I was six, my baseball games, they bring Coke to all the players. And I would like, no, I can't have that. That's against the word of wisdom. And it was LA, so like I was the only Mormon on the team. Anyway, I got in the friend magazine for that. Anyway, um, but that's not the funny, funny story, something else. But yeah, you can reject the entire shipment or you can reject just the Coke Zero. Like we're gonna give you that option under the UCC. And what does that mean? It means you reject it, you ship it back, you pay the, the other, the, the breaching party, the seller in this case, is going to have to pay, reimburse you for all of those shipping costs, et cetera. And they're going to have to ship you the, the, the correct thing eventually or pay damages because you're going to have to buy 250 cases from somebody else. So, so that's, that's where we are with that. Questions? Cool. All right. What else do we got? Uh, we already talked about Mahendra. You don't need to know about that. So let's go to, um, got a couple for today. And a lot of these are just the FOB things that I hate. So um, don't worry, I won't get mad or anything. So, all right. James is a professor who loves to ride his horse on his potato farm. All right, interesting mix of things going on here, but James is basically me, you know that. All right, unfortunately, he needed to sell his farm and move to the city. He puts his horse on sale on Craigslist, for sale on Craigslist. Bud comes by and buys it for two grand. This isn't uh, Tom Selleck's million dollar racing horse. This is just your typical $2,000 horse. Bud gives James a check for two grand and says he'll be back to pick it up the next day. James says, the professor says, the horse is yours. I'll leave it out in front, tied to a tree. So haul it off whether I'm here or not. Bud decides to get it the next day. Unfortunately, when he gets there, the horse is dead. Sad, right? But what can Bud do? Bud's horse that he just bought is dead. All right, go ahead. All right, just a couple more seconds. And all right, that's good enough. Let's see what we got. All right, so yeah, most of you got it. Um, the correct answer is gonna be A. And this, let's talk about this first. Um, he's gotta hope that he got insurance on that horse because yeah, it never left James's property, but James tendered delivery by making it available to him. And, and, and things would change if James was a merchant of horses. If 
if he was, then this becomes that example of the furniture store, right? And, and, and if James is a merchant of horses, then the risk of loss doesn't pass until, until Bud actually picks up the horse and carries it away under the UCC. But because um, James, uh, according to everything that we can tell, is not a merchant, well, it means that A is going to be the right answer. And the risk of loss passed to Bud as soon as he put it out tied to that tree. All right. And that's why B isn't correct. Um, now, C, sue, sue James. I guess you could, but you're going to lose. I, I wouldn't pick C. Um, and then D, make James give him a comparable horse. Again, it doesn't matter because A is the correct answer. Um, so, so, yeah, that, that's why A is correct there. So, good. Questions? Moving on, let's do some FOB codes. So, all right, Jim's in Orlando. He purchases a Moo Moo from Scott in Salt Lake. The contract says FOB Orlando. The Moo Moo is stolen in transit. The loss is suffered by. So, where's the risk of loss? Go ahead. Give you 30 seconds for this one. All right, a couple more seconds. All right, let's see where we are. All right, so everybody got it right. Now, I'm going to do this mostly just for the people at home that are still trying to figure this out, um, watching this at a later time. What we've got here is this is basically what I taught you to do in class. Um, the, the, da the injury, the damage occurs here somewhere in, what did I say, Lubbock, Texas. Yeah, that's where my parents are on a mission. It's a horrible play. Well, it's ugly. It's beautiful in its own way. It's beautiful on the inside. I'm saying. Okay, so uh, it's destroyed here. And the risk of loss, because it hasn't, remember, Scott's over here in Salt Lake. Uh, Jim's over here because the risk of loss hasn't jumped over this fence yet when it's destroyed Scott's the right answer. So good job everybody All right, so uh, Let's go to our next one and, uh, This will be the last one for today. So Mackenzie buys pickles from the pickle co FOB sellers plant all right the pickles disintegrate in transit. I just had to come up with a way pickles would be destroyed. All right, as between McKenzie and the Pickle Co., the loss is suffered by, go ahead, take a couple of seconds for this one. All right, so let's see how we did. All right, so yeah, you, you know how to draw things out. You, you're you're going to be okay. The key here is just never pick UPS, never pick the carrier, um, never pick neither. And of course, Brother Hales, like don't. That, that was just because I needed a D option. So, um, so yeah, good. Um, I think we've got all of that. So uh, with that, um, I'll stop sharing and... Uh, uh, stop recording, but does anybody have any questions before we wrap this up the top hat stuff? Yeah, brother Kels, what does FOB stand for? Maybe I just missed this, but I did not understand. It just means free on board and Again, that doesn't make any sense. Like there's some old English history there That I don't know about and don't care about. Oh, okay. Thanks. It's, yeah, sorry <laughs> it's, that's not, that's not much help, but um, th th there's reasons behind the, those, um, those words. I just, just know that that's just, that's where you draw the line is the easy way to think of it. All right. Well, cool. Thanks, everybody. I will see you next week. Enjoy your weekend without an exam.
<laughs> we'll see ya. Hey, Brother Hills, real quick. Um, yeah. in, in regards to the appeals, uh, 